Welcome to the first video of Section 6, discussing an overview of corridors. Upon completion of this video, you will have an understanding of corridor models and their dynamic nature. If you'd like to follow along with this video, please open the file 0601 Corridor Overview.dwg located in the training folder as discussed in the Working with the Dataset for this course video. A corridor model is one of the most complex object types in Civil 3D. The corridor takes all the other Civil 3D objects that we just created, such as the alignment, profile, and assemblies, and creates a dynamic corridor model from them. When you create a corridor model, you define the frequency that it should model along with different targeting that may be necessary for your design. As with everything in Civil 3D, the corridor model is truly a dynamic model. Let's look at an example of this. Let's zoom into this location of our corridor model and notice that we have an alignment here that is an offset alignment. If we zoom in and select it here, this alignment is a target for one of the subassemblies to stretch out a turning lane. If let's say I stretch this alignment to this new location over here, you'll notice that we get a notification that the corridor model needs to be rebuilt. There is an option if you right click to have this rebuild automatic. I don't recommend that you do this as any changes made to any of the previously defined objects that make up this corridor will immediately rebuild the corridor model, making your session in Civil 3D a little bit slower. We'll go ahead and click rebuild and you'll notice that the corridor model automatically targets the edit made to the alignment. Really cool stuff. Let's look at another example of this. Another really cool trick that you can do with targeting objects within regular AutoCAD is you can create actual constraint 2D geometrics. If I zoom in here and I go ahead and select this polyline that is underneath the corridor model, you'll notice it's actually using 2D constraints. So I have made a regular 2D polyline that's at zero elevation, have geometric constraints such as tangents, coincidence, and so on. And this can also act as my, let's say, turning lane, or in this case, it's a grass panel. And of course, you can target these objects within your corridor model. And if you make any kind of changes whatsoever to this object, again, notice the out of date notification, right click, rebuild, and the assembly will automatically target the edit to that pylon. Just really unbelievably cool stuff. What's also cool about the corridor model itself is that the corridor model, just like with the sub assemblies, has the ability to associate to a code set style. Remember, a code set style tells Civil 3D how to display the different components of a corridor model. Remember, those are point codes, shape codes, and link codes. So if I change my code set style to, let's say, one called visualization, you'll notice here immediately I am left with my line work, which again is really cool. That's saving me a little bit of time to have to even generate my 2D line work. But if I take this object into something called the object viewer, so let's navigate to the general tools panel, object viewer, and let's just kind of rotate our view around here to get kind of a 3D view of the road. And I'll go ahead and zoom in to this part where the grass panel that we just edited was. And if I change my visual style to realistic, you'll notice that automatically, because of the code set style, the corridor model comes in rendered with the correct materials. Just really, really amazing stuff. In summary, we examined an overview of corridors. In the next section, we'll discuss creating corridors.